Our guest today is the Chief Executive Officer for the Cook County Health and Hospital System. The Cook County Health and Hospital System is the third largest public health system in the country. Prior to this position, our guest today served as the Interim Chief Executive Officer at N Natividad Medical Center, the County Hospital of Monterey County, California. There, he led a $35 million turnaround of that organization. Our guest today has a master's degree in health and hospital administration from Xavier University. He has more than 36 years of hospital administration and healthcare leadership experience. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Executive Officer of the Cook County Health and Hospital System, Bill Foley. Bill? Good afternoon. I'm glad the mic is working. And Jay, I'm smart too. I brought my wife. Uh, if I recognize my wife, Mary Collette, would you please stand up? <clears throat> so it's great to be here today. I'm honored that so many people are here on the day before Election Day. I thought I'd change my presentation and give you my views of the election, but you probably don't want to hear that. Uh, so uh, I think we've got some exciting uh, information to share with you concerning uh, Cook County Health and Hospital System. Uh, this uh, slide is not a current operating room, I'm happy to say. Uh, this is one of the old uh, surgical uh, amphitheaters from uh, the old Cook County Hospital. But what I'd like to do is uh, start off by just giving you a brief uh, historical perspective on uh, the Cook County Health and Hospital System, because I'm not sure how many people are totally familiar uh, with our system and uh, some of our history. It started in 1835 uh, when the county government opened a small almshouse uh, offering free uh, medical care. Uh, then in 1910, Oak Forest Hospital uh, opened its doors as an infirmary for the poor and mentally ill patients, and then over the years, uh, tuberculosis patients and long-term care uh, patients. Uh, in um, 1916, uh, the Cook County Hospital, as all of us know, the old Cook County Hospital, uh, opened on Harrison Street uh, right off the uh, Eisenhower Expressway. And then in 1937, uh, we're proud to say that the world's first uh, blood bank uh, was developed at Cook County Hospital uh, by Dr. Bernard uh, Fantas. In 1945, uh, the Cook County Department of Public Health uh, was established. Uh, the P Cook County Department of Health uh, back in those days uh, was very small, but today it serves over two million uh, residents of uh, Cook County. And then in 1966, uh, the first trauma unit in the United States uh, opened at Cook County Hospital. And this is one of the, uh, really one of the premier services uh, that we're known for. Also that same year, uh, our burn uh, center uh, opened. In 1991, uh, an integrated system of health care was established, the Cook County Bureau of Health Services, and thankfully uh, Ruth Rothstein uh, was hired as the uh, first leader of the uh, Bureau of Health Services. Uh, in 1993, the current uh, Provident uh, Hospital uh, on the south side opened. And in 1995, our Ambulatory and Community Health Network uh, was established, and this was under Ruth's leadership, uh, a network of, uh, today we have over 16 uh, clinics uh, throughout the, uh, the county, uh, and we treat over half a million uh, people a year uh, in that uh, clinic network. In 1998, the, uh, the CORE Center uh, opened and uh, was later uh, named after Ruth, uh, the Ruth M. Uh, Rothstein CORE Center, uh, the CORE Center 
uh, is uh, the one of the largest uh, HIV AIDS treatment centers uh, in the country and uh, something that we're very proud of. In and, and 2002, the uh, John H. Strozier Jr. Hospital of Cook County uh, opens, uh, replacing the old Cook County Hospital. And in 2008, the Cook County Board established the, in, the independent uh, Cook County Health and Hospitals uh, system. And then finally, uh, this past summer in June, uh, the Cook County Board uh, removed uh, a sunset provision that was part of the original ordinance uh, that had established the independent board, uh, uh, removing that sunset so that the board can continue uh, to function. <clears throat> so those are some of the, uh, the highlights uh, of the, uh, the Cook County Health and Hospital system over the years. And what I'd like to do now is really talk about um, where we are today. Uh, the mission of our health system is, um, to, to, just to put it very simply, uh, is to provide uh, health care services with dig dignity and respect, uh, regardless of a patient's ability to pay. And I think the, uh, the Cook County Health and Hospital system is really an important you know, treasure for Cook County. Uh, we truly are the safety net uh, for uh, Cook County and play a, a very important role in providing uh, care to the residents of Cook County. Uh, and uh, essentially, uh, we are comprised of three hospitals, uh, Strozier, Provident, and Oak Forest Hospitals. Our clinic network, the Ambulatory and Community Health Network, uh, CIRMAC Health Services uh, at the Cook County Jail, uh, which is uh, the uh, largest uh, hospital facility uh, in a jail uh, uh, anywhere in the country. Uh, we essentially operate an 80-bed hospital uh, at the jail as, as well as uh, several clinics in the various uh, divisions uh, of the uh, Cook County Jail, uh, the Ruth and Rothstein uh, Core Center, and the Cook County Department of Public Health. I'd like to recognize uh, our board because um, as I mentioned, in 2008, when the, uh, when the board was established, uh, there was a, uh, a very involved, lengthy process that I'm sure many of you are aware of or may have even uh, participated in. But the outcome uh, was that we have a very excellent uh, board of directors uh, for the health system. And they have worked tirelessly, uh, tirelessly over the last uh, two and a half years uh, and uh, I believe have, have really, you know, accomplished a, a lot in this period of time. Uh, the chair of our board is uh, Warren Batts. Uh, Warren is a retired, uh, very successful uh, business executive. Uh, Jorge Ramirez, who is the uh, president of the uh, Chicago Federation of Labor, is the vice chair of our board. Uh, Dr. David Anzel uh, is our chief medical officer. Uh, or is the, the Chief Medical Officer of Rush uh, University uh, Medical Center. Uh, Commissioner uh, Jerry uh, Butler. Uh, David Carvalho, who is Deputy Director of Policy, Planning, and Statistics for the Illinois Department of Public Health. Uh, Quinn Golden, and Quinn is here. Quinn, if you could stand up, please. Uh, Quinn is... Um, <clears throat> Quinn is the Associate Vice President, uh, Strategic Affiliations uh, for the Urban uh, Health Initiative at the University of Chicago Medical Center. Uh, Dr. Ben Greenspan is a PhD. Uh, he's the uh, Program Director for the Master's in Health Administration Program at the University of Illinois uh, Chicago School of Public Health. Uh, Sister uh, Sheila Line, President and CEO of Mercy Hospital and Medical Center. Uh, Heather O'Donnell, who's Director of Planning uh, for Health Reform uh, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, Council for the uh, Jewish Elderly. Uh, Andrea Zopp, but, and I believe Andrea is here. I can stand up, Andrea, please. <clears throat> uh, Andy is President and CEO of the Chicago Urban League. And Dr. Luis Munoz, and uh, Dr. Munoz is here, if you'd stand up, please. He's, 
Uh, Luis is a director of occupational medicine for work care uh, medical management. So, as I said, this group, uh, they've just been excellent to work for. And um, when they were formed, of course, you know, one of the first things that they uh, uh, had to do was to recruit leadership for the organization. Uh, so it took them almost a year for, for to the, the for initial year uh, to recruit the uh, CEO. And um, I've now been here uh, a year and a half as the uh, CEO of the health system. Uh, some of the, uh, the accomplishments uh, of the board, which I think are uh, really significant when you look back at where we were <clears throat> as a health system uh, three years ago compared to now, uh, we were able to secure new, uh, what's called disproportionate share hospital program dollars. These are federal dollars that recognize the amount of uncompensated care that we provide to the, uh, to the poor and the uninsured uh, in Cook County. Uh, we received funding of over $400 million. Um, operational improvements resulting in over $100 million of savings through uh, productivity initiatives and uh, reducing uh, expenses and uh, really achieving efficiencies throughout the health system. Uh, you know, billing and collections is something that uh, I'm sure many of you have heard uh, historically at uh, the health system, uh, an issue that's been a problem. Uh, we've been very focused on that, improving uh, uh, our billing, collections, uh, all of the, everything around revenue cycle management, and uh, to date improvements of uh, over $80 million. Uh, just one of the basic uh, industry standards, not just for healthcare, but I think for other industries as well, is to take advantage of, a, of group purchasing by contracting with a group purchasing organization. Uh, we did that and we've, uh, we've achieved annual savings in excess of $35 million. As a result of these and other things, um, We've reduced the county budgeted subsidy uh, by uh, over $165 million over the past two years. And this is from fiscal year 09, our fiscal year 09, to, uh, to our uh, bu preliminary budget that we're proposing uh, to our board for fiscal year 11. And, uh, and then finally, uh, the, uh, through the board's recruitment of me, uh, we've recruited a very strong uh, leadership team uh, for the health system, people with a variety of expertise in health care, public policy, uh, public health care, and industry. And uh, seated at this table, if you guys could wave your hands, are my leadership team. And many of you know, may know Dr. Terry Mason, the former Commissioner of Health of the City of Chicago. <clears throat> And Terry's now going to step up and give the rest of the presentation. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, Terry. I didn't mean to catch you off guard. Uh, Terry uh, has been a great addition as our chief medical officer uh, for the health system. So now I'd like to talk about the future. Um, shortly after I arrived, uh, we began uh, engaging in a strategic planning uh, process uh, for the health system. Uh, the strategic plan was approved this past summer by the Health System Board and uh, by, the, uh, by the County Board. And um, some of the, as we looked at uh, the current state uh, at that time, uh, some of the challenges that we're facing uh, as the, uh, the county health system. As Jay mentioned, we are the third largest uh, public, public health care system in the country. Uh, behind New York and uh, Los Angeles. And um, as we look uh, to the future, some of the challenges, they're, they're with, as, as much as we do and as much care as we provide, uh, there's still significant unmet health care needs throughout the county. Uh, there's large disparities in access to health care and the location of where services are provided. Uh, I was, we were talking at lunch, for example, about the lack of uh, uh, trauma uh, on the south side. There's only one trauma center left uh, at uh, Christ, uh, Advocate Christ Medical Center. Uh, so this issues in terms of, um, you know, where the services are provided versus where our patient population uh, are located. 
Um, we believe that our system resources are disproportionately uh, centered around uh, the uh, inpatient services. And one of the major themes of this plan is to expand access to services and recognizing that we've got limited resources to do so. Uh, so shifting our resources from inpatient to expanded outpatient uh, services is a major theme of this plan. Uh, we recognize that we've got significant uh, financial challenges. Um, the county, you know, is facing financial challenges, of course the state, uh, and uh, we expect uh, declining federal funding uh, moving forward. Um, I hate to say it, but we have a poor public image, uh, the, the county health system, and that's something, especially with health reform, which I'll get into in a minute, that we're gonna have to change if we expect to uh, continue to uh, fulfill our mission. And we're simply not customer service uh, oriented. It's very difficult for people to, uh, to get into our system. And once they, they are, uh, we just simply do not treat them uh, the way that they should be treated. Uh, so these are all issues that we're uh, attempting to address uh, in this plan. Uh, I think this is a very revealing slide which really speaks to the mission uh, of our health system uh, and this is from the uh, State uh, Department of uh, uh, Health and Family Services. It's a couple years old, but the, uh, in, in terms of order of magnitude, uh, these uh, numbers are still very relevant. Uh, today, we provide more than half a billion dollars in uncompensated care. Uh, this is care to the poor, the uninsured, for which we get, do not get uh, reimbursed. Uh, and then uh, the, the other uh, hospitals and healthcare organizations, uh, the next highest ones are listed here. So you can see that by order of magnitude, we're 10 times more than uh, the number two on this list. And if you add all of these, we're uh, double uh, the amount of the other leading hospitals and health systems in Illinois uh, that provide, that are, that are recognized as disproportionate share hospitals. So that's, as we look at our strategic plan and our future, uh, this uh, continues to be a challenge. How are we going to fund and continue to uh, provide uh, these kinds of services uh, to our patient population? And then just some other, uh, I thought, interesting information about uh, our patient uh, mix. This is our payer mix by category of, um, of payment. Uh, over half of uh, the care that we provide is self-pay, which really means no pay. Uh, Medicaid is the next highest at uh, about 29%. And then in terms of sources of revenues, uh, we receive about 35% of our funding from the county uh, through tax subsidies, uh, disproportionate share of uh, funding from the federal government is about 18 percent and then Medicaid is uh, 39 percent. Uh, the county uh, subsidy, at least the, uh, the uh, stated county subsidy uh, for the health system uh, is just under 300 million dollars uh, this year, uh, but that is understated because it does not take into account uh, other indirect expenses like the insurance costs, malpractice, workers' comp, uh, pension, uh, interest and depreciation, those kinds of things. If you look at that in total, uh, we're subsidized by about $500 million uh, from, the, uh, from the county, uh, which is about 14, we represent about 14 to 15% of the total county funding uh, that goes to the, uh, to the health system. I want to talk a little bit about health reform because uh, as we were doing our strategic plan in February of last year, uh, the health reform bill was passed. So it really caused us to take a step back and look at, uh, you know, the impact of health reform uh, based on the plan that we were in the process of developing. Uh, there will be uh, fewer uninsured. Um, we have seen estimates that for Cook County alone, uh, as many as 600,000 people that uh, do not have uh, any form of coverage today uh, will have some form of coverage. Uh, a lot of those, if you look at the demographics, are our patients. 
um, there's going to be significant uh, patient population still that will remain with no insurance coverage. Uh, this would be the undocumented. It would be uh, people that just choose uh, not to um, have coverage, and they would be willing to pay the penalties uh, and, and not have coverage. And a lot of those people will continue to flood our doors. Uh, declining federal funding. As health reform is implemented uh, in 2014 and beyond, uh, the, uh, the, what I had uh, indicated, the disproportionate share funding that we get from the federal government that recognizes the amount of care that we provide to the um, uninsured uh, will decline significantly. Uh, so that will be a huge impact uh, on us in terms of our funding because uh, this year we receive about $150 million in federal disproportionate share funding. And finally, an increasing number of patients will have a choice. Uh, and that, could, that can be good news, it can be bad news. If we need to fix what's broken within our system, we need to focus on changing our image, uh, making it easier for patients to access our system, and providing them with the highest level of uh, customer service in order to keep those patients uh, that we have within our system. Uh, the worst case scenario for us will be we lose federal funding and we lose our patients. Uh, and that if that happens, then it really does threaten uh, the, uh, the viability of our uh, county health system. So the process in developing the strategic plan, we started this uh, as I mentioned, uh, shortly after I came in May of 2009, uh, we conducted a uh, needs assessment uh, throughout the county. We interviewed uh, a lot of people, uh, patients, community groups, providers, and other stakeholders. We held a series of town hall meetings uh, where uh, over 1,000 people attended. And then uh, the uh, health system and the county boards both approved the uh, plan uh, this past summer. Uh, the vision that drives the plan is, uh, is uh, stated here, and I think it's really important, uh, and it's, it may appear to be a lofty goal for us to be reaching, uh, but it is something that uh, we believe our board, our management uh, uh, feel strongly that this is really what we need to strive for. Uh, in support of its public health mission, Cook County Health and Hospital System will be recognized locally, regionally, and nationally, and by patients and, and employees as a progressively evolving model for an accessible, integrated, patient-centered, and fiscally responsible healthcare system focused on assuring high-quality care and improving the health of the residents of Cook County. There's five uh, core goals that comprise our plan. Uh, the uh, number one is uh, to, that we uh, should significantly improve access uh, for our services. And this includes not just geographic access, but uh, all of the things that make it difficult for patients to, uh, to get into our system, from scheduling to appointments to uh, the, uh, the medical records. Uh, you know, our goal is to move this next year to a, a electronic health record. Um, so a lot of uh, focus on, uh, on access in this plan. Secondly, uh, substantially enhanced quality, service excellence, and cultural competence, uh, recognizing the growing diversity of our patient uh, population. And uh, we have invested and are investing a significant amount of resources in improving our cultural competency uh, throughout the health system. We want to build upon our clinical strengths in programs like uh, trauma, uh, our burn center, uh, HIV, AIDS, uh, infectious disease. Uh, there are uh, several services that we really are known nationally for, and we want to continue to invest in and build upon uh, those clinical strengths. Uh, if we expect to have satisfied patients and customers, uh, we need to have satisfied staff and satisfied employees. Uh, so a big investment in our people. 
uh, in employee uh, development. And then finally, assuring that we have strong leadership up and down and across the organization in order to make the implementation of this plan uh, successful. Uh, our strategic objectives, uh, first of all, we're shifting to a more of a population-centered versus a hospital-centered uh, delivery model. Uh, I think in the past we've been uh, overly focused on our hospitals. Uh, so as we look at this plan, we really want to look at, you know, what are the services that our patient, popula uh, pa patient population uh, needs, and then how can we best uh, provide those services, enhancing uh, access to those services. Uh, the plan calls for a shift of our resources, and our resources are uh, going to be limited. In fact, we, uh, the budget that we're proposing for next year uh, is less than this year's budget, so we really have to do more with less. And um, the, rec the, uh, the plan calls for uh, closing uh, our inpatient services at Oak Forest Hospital and taking those resources and developing a what we call a regional outpatient center on the Oak Forest campus, which would be almost like a super clinic with primary care, specialty services, outpatient surgery, urgent care. Uh, and as I'll show you in a minute, uh, we project that we can actually uh, treat more of our patients uh, in that kind of a setting uh, than we do now where it uh, consumes a great deal of resources to operate a, a hospital in over a million square feet of space where we average uh, 50 or so patients a day uh, at Oak Forest. At Provident Hospital, uh, the plan is to downsize our inpatient services, maintain our uh, emergency room, which is very busy uh, at Provident, and then also to invest in a uh, regional outpatient center, expanded outpatient services uh, at Provident. And I know the, the U of C people are here, so you would be mad at me, Eric, if I didn't mention that uh, we are in discussions uh, and have been in discussions uh, with the uh, University of Chicago about a, uh, what I think would be a very exciting uh, uh, relationship, a private-public partnership uh, working together to uh, continue to uh, provide uh, services, uh, hos inpatient hospital services at Provident, uh, where the uh, University of Chicago would provide the faculty, uh, physician staff, and work with us to uh, develop uh, Provident. That is an alternative that we're continuing uh, to pursue uh, with Provident or, or with the, the U of C. Uh, if we did that, then Provident would remain uh, more of a full-service uh, hospital uh, under that scenario. Um, the other um, uh, objectives in the plan, uh, we want to align our services with the population demand. Uh, there are uh, uh, pockets within the county where the demand is higher than others. And as I'll show you in a minute, uh, we're looking at expanding our, out our outpatient uh, clinics in certain areas to, uh, to meet that demand. We also want to build and expand our specialty care services at uh, several of our delivery sites so that people do not have to travel so far uh, to the Strozier campus for specialty care. Uh, we believe there's a great opportunity to uh, really build uh, partnerships and relationships to meet or help meet the unmet uh, demands for, for services throughout the county. We can't do it ourselves, so we've been spending a lot of time with other hospitals, clinics, community health centers, uh, looking at ways that we could uh, partner together at our sites uh, in order to, uh, to do that. Of course, it uh, goes without saying that quality, cost-effective health care is really at the heart of, uh, of, of what uh, we do. And focus on service excellence, employee satisfaction, and leadership development. And then finally, this issue of enhancing our image in the, in the market uh, we feel is critical, uh, that we really need to get the positive stories out about the great things that we do uh, at the county health system. 
Uh, in terms of the expansion of outpatient uh, locations, uh, the plan calls for developing three regional outpatient centers uh, on each of the three hospital campuses. Uh, and these are in the, uh, the darker colors, uh, Oak Forest, Provident. And on the Strozier campus, uh, there already is a plan to rebuild uh, the Fantas Clinic, which would become the third regional outpatient center. Uh, in the far south, there's a high demand uh, in the uh, Ford Heights uh, area, the R Cottage Grove Clinic. Uh, the plan calls for expansion of that clinic. On the west side, our Cicero Clinic, also very high demand uh, to expand our Cicero Clinic. And then to develop a new site in the northwest where we've identified a, a significant demand for services uh, in the, uh, uh, around the Des Plaines uh, area. So that's how the, uh, and, and then in addition to those, we've got our uh, existing clinic sites in the blue boxes with the white uh, crosses. Those are 16 uh, clinics uh, throughout the county. So there's a significant uh, investment in this plan for expansion of our outpatient services to make ourselves more accessible to our patient population. Uh, we project that um, as we implement this plan uh, over uh, the next uh, five years, and we're looking from uh, 2010 to 2015, uh, that we will increase our capacity for outpatient services by 50%. We currently uh, treat about 600,000. We're projecting that uh, can grow to 900,000 patients uh, by 2015. Uh, the impact of Provident and Oak Forest uh, is that uh, we will more than uh, quadruple our capacity to treat uh, patients uh, at both of those sites by shifting our resources from inpatient care to expanded uh, outpatient uh, services on both of those campuses. So if we're successful in implementing this plan, the expected benefits are, first of all, improving access of our services uh, for our patients, uh, improving customer service and patient satisfaction, uh, growing our capacity, as I mentioned, uh, by 50%, uh, that we will have an accountable and patient-focused uh, workforce, uh, performance-driven leadership, and a significantly improved uh, infrastructure. So that's the plan, and uh, I, you know, we think that it's uh, an exciting plan. We, it really does um, involve a major redesign uh, of the county healthcare service uh, services. It involves uh, building stronger relationships and partnerships with um, our other hospitals, uh, other providers throughout the county. Uh, but uh, we feel that um, at this point in time, uh, this is really the, the best way that we can position ourselves to, uh, to meet the ultimate objective, which is uh, improving uh, access uh, of services for our patients. So thank you very much. I try to talk long enough so there wouldn't be time for questions, but I guess, I guess there are. The bowl here at the city club. That'll never happen. Uh, Ms. Saxon gave it to me on the fly. Here we go. Joy Saxon, board member. Are there any term limits for the 11 directors you highlighted? Remember, this is very political. I mean, you know. <laughs> the, uh, the ordinance that uh, established the uh, board uh, assigned five-year uh, limits. Uh, one of the things that we will uh, be working on uh, with the county, uh, county commissioners and uh, county administration uh, will be a process of uh, developing almost like you would normally have with you know, bylaws for a board that would have uh, terms, term limits, and a process for nominating uh, the board, but right now, from the time that the uh, uh, that the board was established in in, tw in 2008, it's uh, five years uh, for uh, for the entire board. <clears throat> Thank you, Ginny. Uh, Ginny, and if 
you have a question, just raise up your... Yeah. This next one is from Christy Hefner, who writes very neatly, I might add. <laughs> uh, you mentioned your belief... Also, very long question. You mentioned your belief that resources are disproportionately focused on inpatient care. Going beyond outpatient, what can you do to focus more on promoting wellness rather than just uh, treating illnesses? Yes, thank you for that question, and that's something I should have uh, mentioned. Uh, as the uh, public uh, health system for the county, a uh, focus on uh, prevention and wellness is, uh, is also you know, very critical. And I think this is the advantage of uh, having our health department as part of our county system, uh, where we can work hand in hand with the health department. And there are a lot of initiatives in terms of prevention, health education, and much more that we need to do. Uh, what plans does Co Cook County Hospital have to work with universities and colleges to offer internships and reduce costs and improve, uh, improve health care? I couldn't read it. Eddie. Well, of course, you know, we are one of the largest uh, teaching, you know, uh, organizations, I think, in the country, we have relationships with um, multiple, you know, universities. I, I won't even try to name all of them because I'll forget some, but uh, I can tell you that uh, that is really uh, one of the very important, uh, you know, parts of what we do in terms of uh, education. And we're always exploring, you know, those opportunities. Uh, with uh, with the various schools and um, and looking at uh, how we can uh, you know address that because we know there's a huge you know demand you know in terms of uh, training and we've got um, you know some excellent opportunities within our health system and a lot of interest on the part of the uh, universities and the schools so so that what that continues to be a very high priority. How about a big round of applause? <laughs> 